It is no secret that in the recent years our nation has faced a financial crisis. Federal and state spending is being more tightly regulated and budgets are being cut left and right. The public education system is not immune to these budget cuts and in fact has suffered greatly at the expense of thousands of children. But how much is the budget for education really being cut? 26 states will spend less per pupil in fiscal year 2013 than the year before, and 35 states are still spending at levels lower than they did five years ago or before the recession. The sequestration cuts that went into effect March 1, 2013 will cut funding for programs in the Department of Education by $2.5 billion. Most people know that the arts are one of the first things to be cut from schools when money is tight. But no big deal, right? Art is just a thing that affects some people, but not everyone. Something that should be optional because it is simply a way to express yourself and nothing more. Right? Wrong. A lot of it comes down from politics and um, a lot of decisions being made at the top from folks who have never entered a classroom since they were students. Um, and when they're looking at numbers, it's really hard for us to try to prove how valid we are in a curriculum. My experience, my first year of teaching, at my largest school we had a budget of $500 for art, which was to me the most I've ever had, um, even though that amounts to, you know, a dollar a student or so. Um, since then, that's been cut dramatically, um, and at some schools I'm operating on zero budget. Find in, in at risk schools they have art less often mm -hmm. than at schools where children are more wealthy, and mm -hmm. because they, they but yet children in, in at risk areas need art just as much if not more, but they mm -hmm. feel like they just are not learning what they need to know right. if they are if they're doing art. Although I feel supported by um, parents and our school systems in general. We are so spread thin, we're the most spread thin of any of the um, subject area teachers. Mm -hmm. um, where for eight schools, there's three of us, so all of us have two or three schools each. But um, we just do what we can do in the time we have <laughs> and the limitations we have. You know, at the end of the day, we want to, and we, we are always asking for more help, but at the end of the day, we're learning to be grateful we can keep our jobs, which I know is not what we went through all our professional training to be able to say, and we know it's not what our students really need, but it's what we're able to do right now. I wish the outlook was better. I think that's why it's been so hard the last few years is I don't see, I don't really see hope for it getting much better on the horizon anytime soon. Because it takes about. money. <laughs> right. And um, we're looking probably more at budget, more budget cuts than supplements. So, um. so why should we worry about kids taking art? What are benefits that come from taking music, drama, art, or dance classes? There are many advantages that come from studying the arts, and research supports the idea that it develops creativity and certain habits of mind that are not developed anywhere else in the curriculum. It's hard because it's hard to make the case sometimes, like, we need arts because of that, and then also because of what we're trying to correlate it with. So you're trying to correlate arts with achievement, but achievement is pretty much always measured by those high-stakes end-of-grade tests. So maybe no, maybe participating in arts doesn't make you do better on Scantron tests. Maybe not. Um, but I don't know if that fact alone is enough of a reason for us to say no arts. Kids who participate in drama um, have more like social emotional intelligence. So they, they get along with other people better than kids who don't do drama. Um, it's probably good for stress release, for sure, and, and I think we don't do a good enough job teaching kids how to deal with their anxiety and their stress in school, and so that can be a really good way to do it because um, not everyone, but most kids are not really um, intimidated by the arts in some way. It kind of depends on how you introduce it, but um, and so they're not too worried to try there where they might be worried to try in school and so that can be a really good way to teach them stress relief. Well I, I think one aspect of art that's often overlooked that I think makes a huge difference is how children develop relationships with each other mm -hmm. through art making mm -hmm. and how they develop a sense of community and a sense of ethical behavior about caring for one another and I, I just think art is a great way of teaching ethics and 
problem solving, of course, mm -hmm. and being flexible, like changing horses in midstream. You're mm -hmm. trying this. Oh, that didn't work. Well, try this. Right. And not feeling like there's only one solution to every problem. Yeah. Art, there's always a disruption. You're painting, you drop your paintbrush, and there's not enough green paint left, or you've used up the whole paper and you have more to say, or mm -hmm. you're out of this or something. And that causes you to come up with a solution. And so I think, I think art helps with understanding about disruption and not seeing disruption as being negative, because mm -hmm. that's going to be the course of everyone's life, I think. Well, I think self-expression, um, that expressive quality of art is, is really important, like to have an outlet where you're just putting yourself out there. Um, for nonverbal types, I think it's essential to have the arts, like for communication, self-awareness. Um, you can realize a lot about yourself through things you produce. Um, and. I think communication is a biggie, designing products that really help people solve a need and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And that's all going to take creative thinking that you're not just going to not going to be able to get in a math class, a history class, an English class, a science class. I mean, science would lend itself well to experimental things, but not the deep creativity, problem solving, collaboration, um, exploration that you get in an art class. Definitely problem solving, um, which I'm sure, I mean, math is about problem solving, but creative problem solving, where they have a way to um, what have a lot of freedom in how they're gonna, they have a problem, and then what they're gonna do about it. I mean, in the marketing world, that's what, you know, think tanks, think whatever, those focus groups, that's what they do all day long, is, <laughs> Here's the problem, how are we going to solve it? Um, critical thinking, of course, um, where they're coming up with unique ideas that nobody else has. Um, learning to work together as a team, group work, or um, working on one, or pieces for a whole like collaborative piece of artwork or something like that. It's a big community builder, and if you can, um, I don't know, get people to realize that other people exist and matter. I know kind of in the social world we're digital and it's like you know people don't have a pulse and right. so that's kind of all the more important too I think is having that sense of community and purpose. Because and mm -hmm. the thing that I'm worried about is that you know we're trying to or I hope we're trying to create you know these 21st century learners. This idea that we don't even know what the jobs are are that we're going that are going to be out there that we need to fill of these kids who are you know in second grade right now, so we're preparing them for jobs that don't even exist. It seems really foolish of us to th assume that preparing kids to take scantrons is going to somehow translate to these crazy jobs that we can't even think of right now. I don't think so. That just doesn't make any sense to me, at least. Um, and if I think about the things you get out of the arts, it seems like some of those kind of soft skills that we might want to see, see kids have anyway.